Judy Munn. I work here at the Ozark Folk Center State Park. I've been here since 1992 here in Mountain View, Arkansas. And it's a great place to work, a great place to visit. And I started here as an apprentice with David and Becky Dahlstedt. They were my mentors. And one of the gifts they gave me was uh, colored clay. And that's what I've been decorating with since 1992. These are some pieces that I've done using colored clay. The first color I used was um, clay and water with cobalt. All of these are clay and water with cobalt. And But the first glaze that I used was a clear glaze, which makes it kind of look like uh, salt glaze. So anyways, through time, I've developed different types of work. At this point, the colors that we use are just um, the, the critter cups, the ones that, with the little animals in the bottom, and the Siposaurus sippy cups, those are all in the um, cobalt with the white. And then the firm pottery, we do in two colors, the blue and the, uh, also a brown. But today what I'm going to do is dec uh, decorate a platter like this. This uses both techniques. This one is um, a slip trailer, and this one is brushwork. And the platter combines both of those techniques plus graffito. What I'm going to do now is I've made some stencils. I drew out a fish and then um, put it on um, I put it on this it's overhead projector transparency. Although if I would do it again, I would definitely use um, something colored because these are really easy to lose. So the colored ones are much easier to find when you drop it on the floor. Not that I would ever drop anything on the floor. So I've got this platter here that I made a couple of days ago. So I formed it one day and then uh, let it stiffen up a little bit and then came back and flattened the rim a little bit because I the rims pop up overnight. So what I'm going to do now is sort of a press this fish stencil on here. I kind of get it set on there just a little bit. And I want it to be even. This one is, a, it's um, kind of like a yin-yang sign, Tao of fishes. Fish is out the yin-yang, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a, a double and it has a positive and a negative. So it's a little more complicated to get on the, on the piece. So once I get it on there, I've moistened the clay already just a little bit because if it's too dry, the stencil won't stick down very well. So I'm going to press this down. Take my sponge and I just keep doing it until it looks like it's not going to pop up. What I'll do next is take a brush and paint over it with the colored clay. And if there's any little piece that is sticking up the uh, like that right there, it'll pop up and the slip will slide underneath it, which I can fix, but it's just nice if I can don't have to do that quite so much. So fish are applied. Now this is clay and water with cobalt. I could use the same clay the pot's made out of with some cobalt added. It's about 2% cobalt, but um, instead we mix up a special slip. Slip is just mixture of clay and water together. And uh, so this is cobalt slip. And you can tell by looking at it that it's got something in it, a little bit of color, but the colorant cobalt is actually a pale, pale pink color at this point. When you, when you first put it in. So mostly what you're seeing is the color of the, the clay since it's not, it's not the same thing the pot's made out of. So I'm gonna put it on here. I don't want there to be any streakiness. Now, if I do want some texture on there, let's say I want there to be a little bit of waviness because I do have fish in water here. I can um, go over it with a little bit of texture like that. And that will show up in the final piece. You can hardly see it right now. So it's stiffened up a little bit now. I went ahead and took the swirly lines, the swiggly lines out of it. So I'm gonna take my tool and just carve into the slip a little bit. So I'm gonna, it's gonna show through to the white clay underneath. And then I'll find his tail, which is over here. I 
Now I'm going to take a little edge of it with my uh, pen tool here. I'm going to grab his tail and peel him off of there. Now a little bit of the slip slid underneath there, but I can clean that up. I have a special tool, a little rubber tip tool that I can use to take those things off. So there's the fish. Now let's check before I call it a done deal. And I'm going to clean up the little edges right there with this tool. It's just a little rubber tip tool used for sculpture. And that's it. Now, the next thing I need to do to it, um, I'm going to take this bulb and draw over the surface, like draw the outline of it and put more details on it, but I have to wait until this dries a little bit. So we're gonna go on to the next one. So this one's set up a little bit, and so I can now touch it. If I do, if I start doing this part of the decorating right after I've put the slip on, if I make a mistake, I cannot erase it. When it's stiffened up a little bit, I can do a little bit of erasing. This is my magic eraser a little sponge. So I'm going to do just part of this because it takes a while to do this. But uh, I use a slightly thicker slip when I'm doing this part. The, the, um, the, when I'm brushing it on, it's got to be a little bit thinner. So this is the one that I was using for the, the um, for brushing it on. And this is, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but this is just a little bit thicker. You know, it kind of makes some peaks. And that's just just a little bit. So I've got that loaded in here and this is a slip trailer and uh, this particular one is handmade. It's a ear syringe cut, or, cut off with a veterinary needle stuck in it. Modified veterinary needle. So I'm just going to take this tool and I just squeeze it. Okay and that spit right off. So I can clean it up just one little thing. So let me, let me shake it down again and get the air bubbles out. I'm just going to squeeze and do the lines. But you get the idea there. So I'll do around the whole rabbit here, the whole rabbit there, and then do the swirls around the edges using this little tool here. Once this piece is dry, uh, which will take about a week, then we'll put it in the kiln. So the dry will look, it'll still be gray. Um, then once it's fired to 1800 degrees, it turns a light blue, then we glaze it. And then depending on what we glaze it with, um, it could, well, in this case, it's going to come out that, um, with that pearly color on it, like the, the rabbit that we looked at before. But I could put a white glaze on it, and that same cobalt slip could come out like this color. Or that, um, you know, it's got several other different, but if I have a clear, clear gray clay, let's see, this is another option. It can come out like that too, with a very, very clear glaze. So once it's finished, then I've got my product and it's ready to sell. It's stoneware and we fire it to about 20, almost 2,400 degrees. And uh, um, we have a gas kiln, a propane kiln here at the Folk Center that we do all that uh, firing in for the fern pottery, the critter pottery, and all of the um, animal decoration.